Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope. Using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, I'm excited because we uh, have a really great grief expert on who's not only talked the talk, but it's walked the walk. And she has trained with some people that we really enjoy and uh, agape. And so I'm excited to hear what her thoughts are on grief, loss, and healing. Would you like to introduce her, Heidi? Sure. As you said, Mom, we're going to talk about giving grief meaning. And our guest today is Lily Doolin. She is a bereaved mom, a marriage and family therapist, and the creator of The Name Work. Lily is also the author of Giving Grief Meaning, a method for transforming deep suffering into healing and positive change. She is a certified heart of yoga teacher, and she completed courses at Agape International Spiritual Center. Welcome to the show, Lily. Hi, it's great to be here. You know, you have got such a great little video on your website about your history, really interesting. And um, you had a a child die um, crib death. And that is our experience is that is such a tough thing. I was completely traumatized, Mm -hmm. completely traumatized. And thank God, you know, we had a nice coroner Mm -hmm. um, who assured me that the, pillowless and blanketless um, crib that she and the, she was in, that care, our beloved Kara was in, um, was safe. I can't imagine being a parent and not having a kind coroner. And there are, there are people, you know, uh, countless people who have not had um, uh, a loving experience with the um, response team that comes in, and and that's real. There's also uh, people that want to invalidate uh, infant death or miscarriage or stillbirth. Mm-hmm. Oh, you'll have more children is a common response that many hear. And how old was she when she died? She was two months, and she died at home heart is with you and and i i've had a couple of miscarriages and they like you said miscarriage infant death etc they're very minimized and people do make statements like well at least you can get pregnant well at least you can have other kids well at least you know she was young etc i'm sure you've heard all of these absolutely absolutely and uh countless women like you heidi who have suffered miscarriages have come to me because they felt silenced. It's time we talk about all of our losses. I'm thinking when you lose a baby, you you don't just lose the baby, but you lose the future. All those years you thought you were gonna have her on the earth with you as your daughter, as she grew up. So you've lost all that as well. Um, what kinds of things have helped you along the way? Knowing simply that there is no right or wrong way to grieve, that grief doesn't have a timeline. I can grieve in my own way, um, in my own time. And early on, um, my dear friend, Michael Beckwith, who we all know Mm -hmm. and love, um, said, Lily, you can choose to grow or shrink from this tragedy. And in that moment, I made the decision to grow. And growth for me meant choosing to see the universe as a friendly place, even when I didn't believe it to be so. Mm -hmm. Darkness was all around me, moving forward um, and really putting the tools that I'd gained as a marriage and family therapist to practice. And out of uh, using those tools, uh, the name work gradually developed. You know, when Kara died, all I had left was her name, Kara. There'd be no more like, hey, Kara, you wanna come in here and see this for a second? Her name, it was like her name was gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And gradually 
over time, these qualities began to develop out of her name. And the first was kindness. The K in Kara is for kindness. And it wasn't like the name work was a thing yet, but I knew I had to be kind to myself. You know, when you get on a plane, they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you can, you know, before you put it on the children. And so I knew that I had to treat myself with self-love, even when I was full of should have, could have, would have. The message is from Lily, you can either decide to shrink or grow, right? That's right. And it may seem cliche, but sometimes we feel buried, buried in darkness, and we've actually been planted. Mm -hmm. And, and I knew that if I just put one little foot in front of the other, that event, eventually I, I had, I chose to see that there was light at the end of the tunnel of darkness, even when I couldn't see it. Lily developed a deck of cards and what it is is the alphabet A through Z and then you can take the cards and put them out and and spell your child's name and there is a beautiful little message or a prompt on each card to help you to move through and you were saying uh, what the first prompt was the K was for kindness so there are different little prompts and you even get more than one on each card. Each card has a number of sample affirmations. And oh, affirmations, yeah. Affirmations are positive statements that we can make about ourselves and the world around us. It doesn't mean that things don't suck because often they do. I like to say that life can suck, but we can't let us, it suck us under because mm -hmm. then it's just you know, not worth living really. So the name work, we can choose, first of all, our own names, the name of someone we've loved and lost, or even a quality like love um, or light. Uh, and out of that, we can find qualities in the letters of our name. We can look at those qualities and see which quality sort of jumps out at us. Now, uh, can, you, can you give us a couple of examples, P. Phil? Phil, so P, um, peace, you know, that's something we all want, uh, whether all the time, but in the early stages of grief, especially it's hard to find peace. It's, it's difficult to even see that it will be there again. Mm -hmm. And how about S for my son, Scott? <laughs> Superb. So, my life is superb. My, my relationships with my friends are superb. By treating myself as a superb being on this planet, um, I'm more able to show up for life in a really awesome way. So this is the affirmative process. And I like that, Lily, and I like that for your daughter, it was, it was about showing yourself kindness. I like how yeah. so much of this is based on us reflecting back to ourselves mm -hmm. when we feel like life is dark and we can't find our way back to hope. Yes. Yes. And um, I, I offer Kara's name as a template for everyone to use. You know, the qualities that I found in Kara's name are kindness, alignment, regeneration, and action. And it took me a long time to come to those qualities. And it's a way of keeping Kara with me. Yeah. You know, she, she may not be here in the physical sense, but by working with the qualities in, in her name, I have to, you know, I'm holding the high watch on myself, right? I, through her name, I need to show up for the world and show up for life um, in her honor, in her beloved memory. So when we use the name of someone we love, um, when we use that name, when we hold that name dear, it's like a catalyst, like a magical catalyst for life. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I don't wanna dishonor her name. So when I hold dear the qualities of kindness, alignment, 
regeneration and to action, uh, I'm already on the path of healing, even in the darkness. I, I love that you're on the path of healing. I know, you know, that the light that was Scott's life shines through both of you. You're doing the name work. You're honoring his name by being of service to those who grieve, you know, in his beloved memory. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're all giving that grief meaning. Yeah, but- as are you. We have interviewed thousands of people and they are all doing uh, work in the name of uh, someone who they've lost. Now, may I say one thing to our newly bereaved people that are listening? This may be the future for you. You may be at the very beginning of this journey, but this part of what hope is, that there's hope that you will be able to open yourself to finding something that feels meaningful for you. And you may start very early in service. I mean, it may just be taking a cookie to a group, a grief group you belong to, or just getting yourself up to go, or just putting your shoes on the right foot, or your socks, or finding one little piece of gratitude or something. It's the seed, like you said, can be in the darkness, in the dirt, in the very, very beginning. Wouldn't you say, Lily? I would definitely say so. And I love um, that you mentioned bringing just a cookie, it's not just a cookie, that cookie has a ripple effect. And um, we have a Giving Grief Meaning Collective and many people are of service on the collective. They're not doing the name work specifically and some of them haven't even read my book, Giving Grief Meaning, but just being part of a group, listening to this podcast is a way of planting seeds, even if we can't see it, even if we don't believe it to be true, something, something is happening right here, right now. And it's stepping into that. And and by being here today, by listening today, we're all in the yes, we're all in the possibility. I know I feel better than when I got up this morning just by being here with you, just by being with others who are on the path. Mm -hmm who are working towards something greater, who are creating meaningful lives. And that's what Giving Grief Meaning is about. That's what the name work is about. And 100% of the proceeds from the book go to support our Care Love Project, which helps marginalized people everywhere, um, as far away as Nepal. Um, And that's actually really where the seeds for the book uh, uh, were, were really planted. My friend uh, Stephanie Weisler Rubin started um, an orphanage, which is now called a group home in Nepal. And there was something about being there that allowed me to be with my grief in a new way. And it was eight years after Kara had come and gone, but I came back and the book came pouring out of me in a great catharsis and and now we're here today um exploring the possibilities of names i want you to tell us how they can get your book giving grief meanings the book a method for transforming deep suffering into healing and positive change so that's the name of the book and where can they get it you can get it on uh amazon uh that's a, a very easy way for many Target, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, um, your local bookseller. And I hope uh, you'll look into it. You can find me at www.lilydoolin.com. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me uh, on a Facebook author page. Um, and I look forward to connecting. All right. Well, thank you, Lily, for being on our show today. It was delightful. Thank you for having me. And thanks everybody for joining us on the show today. And please visit us at opentohope.com. And Heidi and I, and I'm sure Lily, always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own and God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.